um, so here's one. That we're just, when you repot, what you do is you just pull it out of the pot, you check the label, make sure it's still clearly legible. You look at the potting mix, you, you get as much out as you can. And I, I know it, it seems brutal compared to a normal house plant that you just throw in a bigger pot with more potting soil. But so you wouldn't soak it before you do this? You, you, you can soak it, uh, particularly if you have a if it's one that you're going to have a hard time getting it out of the pot or if it's in a clay pot. If you have a lot of roots outside the pot, soak it as well because the roots will be a little more flexible when they are fully saturated. And, and remember that the, the roots um, are a very thin, woody fiber surrounded by a big spongy tissue. And if you hear one crack while you're doing it, especially phalaenopsis, don't, don't worry about it. That's just the soft, spongy stuff that's cracking. You're, you're not going to kill the root. Um, so we get as much off as we can. And then you have to keep in mind there's two types of growth in the orchid world. This is what we call sympodial growth. Uh, simple foot, pod, podiatry foot. So it has a simple foot. It just keeps crawling across the pot. Your phalaenopsis is a monopodial orchid, and it just grows upwards from the central central point. So phalaenopsis, vandas, all those things are just upwards from the central point. Those guys, you just throw them right back, usually in the same pot. Uh, but the critical thing with them is a pot just big enough to hold all the roots. So the pipe that crawls across the pot, you need a pot big enough to hold all the roots and leave room for about a year, maybe two years worth of growth. So because this is crawling across the pot, we don't want to just stick it, a, a normal house plant, you'd plop it right in the middle of the pot and be done. Mm -hmm. This, because it's crawling across the pot, and this is the front part of the plant, we want to put them in more like this, so the, the newest part of the plant is towards the middle of the pot. Occasionally you'll get a, a plant that there's a new spot here and a new spot over here, and, and then you know, it's like, what do you do? You just do the best you can. Now, I didn't bring my giant sponge with me, and I wish I had, because it's a valuable demonstration. When y'all go home, does everybody have a sponge at home? Just a regular yeah. sponge? I want you to soak it. Just completely fill it up with water. Get as much water in as you can, and then pick it up and lay it on its side like this, and just let it set for about 10 minutes. And then go and feel that sponge, and you'll see that all the water has settled to about the bottom third of the sponge. And then soak it again, tip it up like this, and just let it set for 10 minutes, and you'll see again that all the water settles to about the bottom third of the sponge. It's the same thing with orchid mixes. They're, they're ideally just a big sponge. So the idea is that you want lots of air on the roots, and you want the roots to be evenly moist, not dry spots and wet spots. <clears throat> By putting some styrofoam peanuts or gravel or broken pot shards in the bottom of your pot, you've eliminated the ability for your potting mix to hold water in the bottom third of your pot, and your roots and plant will stay much happier, especially something like the cattleya that wants to dry out between waterings. Um, there are some people who will tell you, oh, that's just a place for bugs to hide. Well, there's plenty of places to bugs to hide. I, I wouldn't worry about the styrofoam. Um, so I put about an inch or so in there, and make sure, if you're using styrofoam, make sure you use closed cell styrofoam, not the open cell. The open cell is a sponge, and it will collapse. You don't use the starch peanuts, because they'll turn to mush at the bottom, and <laughs> you'll wonder why your plant is settling over time. <clears throat> so then I just put the, the plant in the pot. Can you use sponge rock? Yep, sponge rock, you, you can use anything you want. Um, and. As far as orchid mixes go, you can use anything you want. I mean, on the bottom, like Yeah, that. It really, anything, as long as it's, it's going to stay open and hold its shape and not decay. Uh, so some people will soak their orchid mix first. Um, personally, I don't, I don't like to because then it gets all over my hands and then I, everything I touch, I can't. And then when my glasses slide down my nose, it's like, what do I do? So I like mine dry, and then I soak everything as soon as I'm done potting it. But you just put in a handful and work it down in amongst the, the roots that are here. This particular mix is, is fir bark, charcoal, and sponge rock. Um, and the, the charcoal and sponge rock do not decay. So even as some of the bark decays, it's still there's a, like a superstructure to hold open space. But you work that in amongst the roots. And you just keep putting it in until you can't get any more in. 
And again, it does not matter what you use. If, if you're a big wine drinker and have a whole box of wine corks, <laughs> it makes a great potting mix. Really? Yes. Um, there was a guy who used to grind up old tires and use that. Some people use coconut husk. Like we went through that tire business some years ago. Yeah, it didn't last very long. No. I think it was because people had all these ground up tires that they couldn't really do anything with after their orchids needed to be repotted. <laughs> um, so you just keep putting it in and you really pack it in good. Um, you want it to be nice and firm. With, with cattleyas, because they have this rhizome growth, a lot of people will use what's called a rhizome clip. And it's just a, a metal wire that clips over the side of the pot, comes down in, and then a wire right across that goes across the rhizome of the plant to hold it steady. I didn't happen to bring any of those, but I did bring a stake. So if your plant is wobbly, you want to make sure that you stake it up or put a rhizome clip on it. <clears throat> The reason being, when this starts to put out new roots, the tips of those roots are very, very uh, susceptible to damage. So you want to make sure that your plant doesn't wobble back and forth when you take it to be watered. It wants to be nice and firm and steady in here. Ideally, you should be able to lift your the whole pot and everything up by the plant. If you use a rhizome clip, you can. If you do it the way I did now, you probably can't. And I'm not going to make a mess in here because I have to clean it up. Um, at home, I don't care because I'm it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that, that's the type that crawls across the pot like the cattleyas. A lot of times um, you'll have a plant like this that when you get it is not in what you might consider an ideal orchid mix. This mix is not broken down or anything. There's really no reason to repot it except this plant likes to be evenly moist and it came out of Hawaii where it rains on it every day. In my greenhouse, it does not rain on it every day, so I need something that holds a little bit more moisture. Oh, last thing, don't forget to put your label back in. If you can't read your label, write a new one. And it never hurts to put two labels in, one way down inside the pot and one up where you can read it. And that way, if you set them outside for the summer and a bird pulls it out, or you take it to a show and somebody else pulls it out and doesn't put it back, later when you repot the plant, oh, there's the name. Uh, so. Um, always do your labels. So this guy, since he likes to be evenly moist, and he's in a very coarse... Oh, one more thing that I'm going to do just for Mark's benefit here. Um, what you, one of the things you want to avoid is spreading disease. So after you're done... Hey, that's on my notes. Go over what you're doing. Okay. After you're done, you, you take your, your top sheet of newspaper and get rid of everything and start fresh so that you're not transmitting stuff from one plant to the next, except for my fingers, which I should have been wearing gloves and all that. So, again, I pull them out of the pot. You can see how coarse that, that mix is? This guy likes to be evenly moist. And it's not that this isn't a fine mix for this, it's just that under my watering, it's not moist enough. So, for that one, I want a little bit finer mix. When I go through my greenhouse, I want to water everything at the same time. So things that want to dry out a little bit more between watering are in a very coarse mix. Things that want to stay a little bit more moist are in a finer mix. Uh, things that want to really stay moist or are in tiny pots would maybe be in sphagnum moss. This guy can go right back in the same pot. And because he likes to be evenly moist, I'm not worrying about, and he's in a very small pot, I'm not really worried about that bottom couple inches. In the wild, this type of plant would be growing on a, usually on a, a cliff face or someplace where there's a crack in the rocks where they can actually get their roots right down into places that are always moist. Uh, okay, and now when I take these to the sink and water them, what I want to do is I want to completely fill the pot up with water. In fact, you might even, it, for the first go-around, just set it in a bucket of water. Make sure that you don't set it in too deep of water that all the stuffing floats out. But ideally what you want to do is to completely fill it up with water, lift it out so that all the fines and stuff, that because there's lots of little fine bits in this potting mix, you want to wash that out so that it's nice and open and airy. And make sure that you really get it dry. If your potting mix is dry to start with, it takes a long time for it to absorb water. And your plant is used to being in something that is probably a little past its prime and hold lots of water. So you need to adjust your watering a little bit after you do the repotting. 
Now the last big thing in when repotting is dividing a plant. And this is one that is ready to be divided. Sorry, Mark. I'm, I'm not going to let him touch any of that old debris. Just my fingers. This is a terrestrial orchid, and again, this this used to live in Hawaii, where it got rained on every day, so the chorus the coarse mix was not an issue. But I'm ready to divide it because everybody wants a piece of this thing. A lot of times, as you're pulling the old stuff off, you'll find that things will either just like fall into pieces for you or you really have to fight to get pieces off of it. And sometimes you can take your your spray nozzle to help really clean this stuff up and then you can help to separate roots. That was a big chunk of dead rotten root there. And this, this is your opportunity to get rid of dead and rotting stuff. Okay. This is the part we hate. These, these terrestrial roots have a lot of uh, fine hairs that get intertwined on the roots, so the roots are actually stuck together. And the trick is to pull it apart without actually destroying more than you have to. Okay, so out of that one thing, we have we really have four plants. Now, because I'm doing the repotting right now, I don't want it to put any more energy into the flowers. So away they go. If you have a Phalaenopsis that you're trying to rescue and save, yank the flowers off because it's just an energy drain for the plant. <coughs> so. Because this is a terrestrial and wants to stay always moist, I like to use sphagnum moss for these guys. And make sure that if you're using sphagnum moss, that you soak sphagnum moss first. Because just like a ballpark frank, these plump when they get wet. And if you fill the pot up with dry sphagnum moss and then water it, you will have a busted pot and a plant with exposed roots. Different people pot with sphagnum moss differently. I like to just sort of keep wrapping it around the roots. And when I put it in the pot, I like it to be pretty snug. Mm -hmm. um, when I say snug, I like to compress the sphagnum moss because Will it sphagnum... Will out now if you, if you water it? What's that? Will it, will it swell up and burst yeah. plus this? No, no, because this is already damp. It's already done its okay. swelling. Um, okay. The... Uh, the difference between packing the sphagnum moss in tight or leaving it in very loose is a, a key factor in how long it lasts. The sphagnum moss grows in bogs and it collects as it ages and forms peat. And the reason it does that is because it's an, an anaerobic environment. There's no oxygen down there to cause it to rot. Um, if, if, you, if I left this in a pot just nice and fluffy like that, yeah. Um, yeah. within yeah. probably three or four months, this would be rotted. There'd be nothing left. Because, because there's so much oxygen getting to it. Okay. Um, what, what you really want is for it to be snug. The, the surface is gonna rot, and the, and the, it, the vent holes is gonna rot, but when you water, and that water goes flowing through there, it's gonna pull the fresh air in. Not so much that it rots the, the potting mix, but that it does get oxygen to the roots. Okay, so um, pack it in snug, not, not so you can't get any more in, but snug. Um, and you just do that to each of your divisions, and then, of course, you label them all appropriately. And since I forgot to bring pots, I'm just going to throw the rest of them in here. <coughs> Instant specimen plant for next year. <laughs> Actually, I get home and finish repotting those into small pots, but that's good for now. Um, any questions on repotting? Yes, not. We have a phalaenopsis.